Okay, so here we are today down in the messy workshop again, and I have company today. Lauren's down here with me, and she's painting brass that will resin later because I'm really starting to get into this collage stuff. I guess you can tell I'm wearing a piece. If you go to my blog or to my Beastie Boutique's Facebook page, you'll see a close-up of this piece. But this is actually the piece that I showed you in my last video, which was the first in the series of collaging. Um, and it was the butterflies and stuff in the pewter rocks. Well, now it's all been painted and resined and glittered and set with stones and the whole nine yards. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you can put a necklace together. Today. I'm going to show you my glue technique and a few other cool things. And Lauren, you can say hi to the people. Hi, everybody. Oh, there she is real quick. Hey, hey, hey. All right, hope you didn't get a headache over that and Rob didn't move it too fast. Okay, so when I come back, I'm going to show you how to do the glue technique. Okay, so I just thought I'd leave this out on my workspace here so that you could maybe get a little bit closer look at it. I used um, some fake star sapphire. These are checked glass beads. I used some Robin's Egg Blue Lamp Works that we sell. We sell these at the site. We sell the butterflies at the site. We sell the tulip beads. We sell most of this stuff at the site. But I want to show you, I even tinted my clasp. This is a Joe McKay sterling plated clasp which we don't carry at this time because I'm not able to get enough of them. They're kind of hard to come by sometimes. Anyway, this is this piece. So go to the blog and you can have a really good close-up look because it's a really nice picture that Shelly took yesterday. So I'm going to move this aside. Okay, getting back to glue, glue technique. Here is a piece that I actually put together this morning. This is just a little piece. And you don't see there's a lot of you know blue residue on this. It's a little bit. I can do some clue, uh, some cleanup with a little bit of glue, um, I can't talk goo gone on a swab. You can get goo gone anywhere. Go to Walmart. You can get goo gone. It's fine, easy to get. I build out around the holes here, and this actually will hold. I, will hold. I may even drizzle a little bit of resin down around into there, or maybe even a little bit of. Uh, diamond glaze and it may help to, to hold this right around the holes because here's where you're going to go through to beat it. Look how neat I did that. See, you don't see a lot of glue, just a little bit right here. And once again, I can remove that with goo, uh, goo gone. And then what I'll do is once this gets set up really good, because I just put it together this morning so it's really not cured, I will sign my name right here in script with my Dremel and it'll be cool. Uh, in case you wonder what these holes are, they're uh, from the mold when they make these. And you know what? If you want to make a collage like this, a really good bargain at our website is we carry these bags of pearls like these ones here you see in this mess. See, this is a real working woman's workspace right here. I usually have it all cleared up for you, but when I'm collaging, it's like this and worse because I have all these things that I'm pulling from. But anyway, all these pretty pearly things. You get like a big old bag of them, that's like, I don't know, a hundred pieces or something for some ridiculously cheap price. I don't know, it's like five, six bucks or maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less. These are all vintage. These were used in designer jewelry. They're designer quality. They are acrylic. They're about 30 years old, most of them. Um, you get a big old bag of stuff to play with there. You have to buy glass stones and everything's cool. So anyway, you can make something like this very inexpensively. And once again, um, these are the bases that I use that we have on our site. Once in a while, I will have these kind of bases on eBay, but they usually have to be drilled. I drilled them. And then what I like to do when I drill something is I like to set a tube rivet. It just kind of finishes the hole. On these, they're pre-drilled from the manufacturer. There's no tube rivet. But before I use this, I may well put one in because I just, I don't know, I think it gives it a nice kind of finished look. But anyway, um, something that I wanted to show you too this week. We have been painting a lot of brass like we did in the video a few weeks ago. This is a piece that we did. Now I will actually cut this up to show you. I went off camera there. I will cut this up. And I will use these pieces in my collage. See how neat? I mean, you probably wreck your nice Tim Holtz uh, tonic scissors doing this, but you know. They're not that expensive, and they work good. You could use a nippers if you'd rather, but I'll cut those up, see. But the on this one, now, this had some resin overflow, and I wanted to show you this. So I went to peel that off, and look what happened. Took my resin, it took, the resin came off with this. 
So, you know, if you have resin overflow like right here I have on this piece, what you want to do is you want to cut that piece off. Or if you want to leave the piece whole, uh, you want to get I got a piece of fuzz or something here. You want to cut that and take it off to do your cleanup. Don't don't pull on it. Now I haven't done a real good job on that, but you know I'll get back on that later. And sometimes with the resin you do have a little bit of cleanup and it's a pain in the butt, but what can I say? It's the nature of the beast. I want to share that with you. Don't pull it off on these stampings. Cut it off and then work it off with your fingers and you'll be good. Something else I wanted to show you quickly today is I actually did a cuff. Um, this is a piece that I painted. It's a cuff that we carry on the site in raw brass. Um, and then I manipulated a painted filigree around it. This looks like, oh, that's going to fall off any minute. But let me tell you, this is on hard as nails. It's not coming off. This will be on there for as long as you want to wear it. So I just manipulated the, the filigree around the edges. And then um, originally it had been had these pieces riveted to it, these three layers. And we resined these, colored and resined them. And then I just set that little stone in there with a little bit of glue. And then to get it to set up, this is a little tip for you. If you have some Ballantini or if you have a bunch of little pearls in a tray like this, I work out of this, but it serves a double duty. I stick my cups down in there and then it holds them so stuff doesn't go sliding all over while it sets up with the glue. So there's a nice little tip for you. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to attempt on camera here to try and build the front of this piece in just a few minutes, or at least the basic part of it, so that you can get the gist of how my glue technique works. Of course now I use E6000 glue, which we had the big lecture on already. Keep it off your hands, you know, to the best you can, and then do some really serious, good, clean scrub up. Scrub up good. Keep it off. Don't eat while you're using it. And uh, here's my technique. Now here I'm going to start with this piece. And sometimes they're bent a little bit, so I'll kind of get them flat a little bit so I can work with them. I'm going to start with this piece. I'll flip it over, and this is a small tube, but they have a bigger tube too. In fact, we sell it on the site. Don't get too, too much on it. See, I'm trying to get a little bit of that off. And it gets stringy sometimes, so sometimes you have to deal with that. But if you use a little bit less, it's better. Then it's what I, I just kind of slide it into place. And then it kind of smears the glue underneath it really, really well to get a good solid bond. Because you don't want to get what you call a starved bond where there's not enough glue. So I slide it into place. So, okay, that's right about in the middle where I'm going to want it. I might make it a little lower. Also, I think I'm going to do these two girls like this. But now you got to watch you keep your holes free here because that's where you're going to attach it like I did in this piece here just to show you to flip it over. You see, this is the attachment, so you've got to leave those holes free. Okay, I'm going to put that back over there. Okay, so let's get these on here. Just, just right there in the middle. And then slide it into place where you want it. Okay, I'm going to leave a little space in there because I'm going to fill in with my my um, leaves and stuff. See, it's already spilling over there. That's what I don't like about this stuff, but oh well. Alright, then I'm going to slide this one into place. Alright, now I'm big for balance. It, it can be typical balance or it can be asymmetrical balance, but I like things to be balanced. That looks pretty balanced to me. Now the trick is going to be to get the to get the leaves in. Rob says we've got one minute left, so I'm going to have to go fast. But anyway, just kind of slide them in. Do you see what I'm doing? Just slide them into place. And it can even be up over something. That gives it dimension. But you see, I'm just sticking that right down in there. And then I'll just slide it in place like that. And then if I have a little glue glob, I can deal with it while setting a pearl or something over it. Then see, to deal with this, I'll just put some in there. This is a painted piece and a painted piece. 
And then I'll probably just build some little pearls and stuff around this so this won't this brass won't show. And now I have the needle to finish. So I've got this cute little rose ox. I'm going to stick this in the middle right here. Isn't that lovely? And then all what I'll do is I'll just use my tweezers to set my pearlies and things like that over top of it. So the next time we get together, maybe we'll do a video on that and just get a little more, more precise. But that's pretty much the glue, glue technique. Hope you enjoyed that. Contact me if you had any questions because that's why I'm here is to help you with this and I hope you enjoy.